rituximab has been used in primary central nervous system lymphoma, but uh, not based on a whole lot of data, and certainly no phase three data, which we now have, and you may be surprised by the results. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Jeanette Dordain, who is from Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. She has an MD and a PhD, and Dr. Summer Issa, who is a representative for the Australasian Leukemia and Lymphoma Group, ALLG. So what's the issue? What's the concern about the use of rituximab in this setting without phase three data? We think it's always useful to have a phase three uh, trial to really compare uh, in a clear way um, the, the outcome of treatment if you have uh, a new component of the treatment. So in this case, we were treating a primary central nervous system lymphoma. There were phase two data and respective data of, uh, with rituximab, but we thought it was uh, good to see if this really improves um, the outcome in, uh, in the phase three study. So this is an area where people have been using rituximab, correct? Correct. So since the publication of the Recover60 trial and the Minter trials uh, many years ago now that have shown improved uh, overall survival in patients with systemic non-Hodgkin uh, lymphoma of the B subtype, uh, um, most uh, uh, clinicians have uh, started using rituximab in central nervous system lymphoma given that more, more than than 90% of these patients are of the aggressive B cell lymphoma subtypes um, and uh, assuming that that will improve not only the um, progression, the response rate, but the progression of free survival in this group of patients. So it's all extrapolation from the results of the systemic uh, B cell aggressive non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So what did you do? What did you tell me about the patients and what exactly you did in the study? Yes, well, we started to, um, in, uh, to first to calculate how many patients would we need for a randomized phase three study, and we would need uh, 200 patients. We were uh, uh, using MVVP as a regimen uh, outside of clinical trials, and we said it, it would be the standard arm. Uh, so pa a patient received two cycles of MVVP, and then the consolidation with high dose cytarabin. And the, in the experimental arm, we added rituximab. And to use um, the disrupted blood-brain barrier early in the treatment, we gave it four times, uh, so weekly, during the first cycle of MVP. And then after that, um, in the second cycle of MVP, we gave it uh, on day uh, zero and day 14, so one day before the MTX. Um, and then we decided uh, it should be more or less uh, cover the patients that you usually uh, treat with this uh, regimens. So we had uh, we chose for an upper age, age limit of 70. And uh, the only thing is that we decided not to uh, give uh, consolidation whole brain radiotherapy in elderly patients above 60 because of the risk of uh, cognitive uh, deterioration. Uh, so your primary endpoint was event-free survival? Yes, the primary endpoint was event-free survival at one year. Yes. And what did you find? Well, um, we didn't find a difference in uh, event-free survival at one year. Uh, no difference uh, um, uh, between the two arms. And before that, also a secondary endpoint was response rate after the MBVP or RMBVP. And uh, that was also uh, not different. And progressive free and, and overall survival, no difference really there? Uh, no, there's no difference uh, really there. Uh, overall survival will need some more uh, time. Uh, to uh, well to, to evolve. Uh, so the addition of rituximab to high dose methotrexate based chemotherapy really didn't improve response rates. So should this just be not not at all? Should this uh, just be ignored now or go to back to something else? It's hard to um, finalize uh, the uh, uh, decision. Uh, yet, we are waiting for the overall survival uh, results. We need more time. But what we can uh, say with certainty is that the response rate in the two groups is identical. Um, so adding rituximab has not led to improvement in the response rate uh, in the group that received it. Uh, we also know with certainty that for the entire group, 
all patients, old and young, for our 199 patients, there is no improvement in the event-free survival uh, at the one-year point, which is our primary end point. Um, uh, this result is somehow uh, expected, um, I have to say, uh, because rituximab is a large molecule and it crosses the blood-brain barrier um, um, at a very small concentration, uh, around 1%. Uh, as as uh, Jeanette has just mentioned, we were uh, hoping that by giving the rituximab intensively, right. initially, weekly, for the first cycle of treatment that we will use the opportunity that where the blood brain barrier is disrupted because of the disease itself which would have led to more penetration and more effect um, on the tumor itself but we couldn't find that so difference. given the fact that unless there is a separation of curves as we go along this really answers the question doesn't it there's no need to do anything else um, well we did an, uh, an unplanned uh, uh, sub-analysis, <laughs> that's always difficult for statisticians, but we asked our statistician to check if elderly uh, patients behave differently than younger patients. And we did it beca because the younger patient received additional radiotherapy. And uh, now uh, there might be um, an effect, a positive effect of rituximab in younger patients, but it's too early to say it's uh, statistically not significant. And in fact, um, we don't really understand why this difference is there. So we might check uh, if there's more toxicity in the elderly patients, but, uh, and we have to do it in more detail, but up till now we don't see uh, um, a difference in toxicity that can um, explain this uh, difference in outcome in younger and elderly patients. So will ALLG continue with this study or expand on it, or do you think that there's room for more information too? Um, we we um, are um, because we um, are a planning sub-studies uh, that is uh, molecular genetic uh, studies, uh, lab studies that uh, this uh, samples, we collected samples on all of our patients. Uh, we also are hoping uh, to do cognitive uh, studies because we've collected uh, MPEs, uh, um, data and quality of life uh, data from our patients. Uh, so yes, we are um, hoping that we will uh, continue to look at um, all of the data that this study will generate for both groups.